we say we're not scientists, but we surely are. We, I mean, uh, we try to provide you the best with some of the vaccines and then some of them. Um, you know, we are missing on them to actually go out there and, and make this thing. So we've been looking at that and I'm them. And I think we have been more than used to, but we have still been so much more. And I think it's all about this and I was looking at those plans of the vacation on plans in the UN and looking at the text that they're debating on at the last five of the next. And one of the things that, that the new constituents of the UN were very um, proud to push forward um, in the directions that we did manage to get into the text uh, was this issue um, of education and participation capacity in, um, in the national curriculum back home. And one of the things the UN put into the text was that um, this should be a cross curricular thing. So it's never just being, you know, you, you, you learn matters of science or citizenship or, or PSAT or whatever. It's actually across the board. So you learn about it in history in the context of how it affects other countries. You learn about it in, in, in geography. You learn about it in, uh, and it's something that's embedded into the public consciousness. And that's what I'm going to see more often. And then I'm going to say the time that when you are in the context of the education, it's more of a long-term investment. You're not going to see those effects until you know, the uh, children have developed and they can come into the community. Primary school level, kids are what we call chained around the cycling and then the water discipline. So they're going home and maybe the parents, you know, maybe not recycling and not fixing lights up. And sometimes fixing lights up for people are really taking it too far. So, so it, you know, there is some change there and parents are finding frustrating and they're just like, okay, 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 fine. So there is some change. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's more on, on your own perspective than the first and second round of predictive uh, over the next 10 years. Five years to growth rate in building technology. Now, that's going to be a six and a half billion pound market, that is. Now, if you stand to yourself, do you want to be part of that growth in that market? Or, or with an existing system? So, if you own first, I may work first, and I've got affiliated with this system to provide some of assessment. And then that helped me through as a professional. I mean, that's the next one. I mean, a lot of schools in there. So, we've done a sustainable garden project for about nine schools. The reason we do that is not to just run around the sun, it's purely here for that is the reason. Um, over the next two to three decades, this country is going to become too vulnerable. We do need to assist to think about food. We can't carry on in the past 20, 30 years because uh, it becomes unviable. Cheap oil and only gas is our apple for this, and we do have at the moment. We can't do that in Britain. A lot of my kids are going to be the gardeners of the future, so we're tackling that area. Spin-off from that is that they go home and think to mum and dad about it. They go home and think to mum and dad not just about the potatoes they've grown, but the whole ecosystem that they've grown in. Mm -hmm. I then get to pick up and mum from that. I then get to talk to them about social work. I really want to know. The quality of growing is improving all the time. What's happening is that awareness is growing. And with awareness comes understanding of why people like us do what we do. And once that happens, things that we do become easier. They become, they get better take up. They get more positive reaction. So the whole trend is very much moving forward. It's very much uh, an increase in, in my mind. Yeah. Uh, can you just maybe see? Uh, one thing I really want to touch on is um, you guys talked in the intro agreement a couple of months ago about the debate back in Copenhagen as well. I see action happening on a global scale in terms of these conferences. Is that actually anything happening on top of that? What does it look like for? These are happening. But you know, uh, this debate process was implemented by me. And, uh, and I think you've touched on previously a little bit about political difficulties uh, that uh, uh, affect all countries when they're trying to uh, manage uh, national agreements at this scale. Uh, unfortunately, politics, people are elected, so you know, if it's done at a national level, you know, they're able to choose uh, the activities of one country on their own. There is progress being made. It was regrettable that Copenhagen didn't come out with a legal agreement at the end of it, but it did come out with an accord, um, which some countries agreed to take note of, and it's brought the world to uh, recognition. Um, but that is a process of psychological change. It's at least saying, countries are at least saying, look, we recognize that we're an issue, uh, and there are things that uh, we would like to try and do, and we'd like to try and resolve problems that are caused by climate change. But uh, if I could just make a very briefly point 
from the from jobs among young people. So you see, there are lots of gaps uh, for the green economy. And the green economy is uh, a whole economy that is really the result of uh, the green agenda for the Western manufacturing and the Western civilization. But if the green economy really is the main thing that brings the best to people, because people are waiting for it, and, and telling you that it's already here. And from an industrial perspective or from a commercial perspective, there are particular areas that industry desperately needs to be looking at today. So let's just take the example of cleaning the door to the office and kind of point that out. Final thoughts from the audience as well, because I'm just wondering how much we're going to bring to this. Just I'm going to point out what, what you're taking from this is definitely on board with. Um, I quite like the idea actually of like taking the job one step and sort of just like educating that over to the kind of peer internet for us to use on um, other people as well. I think that's, that's quite important. You know, it's nice to talk to other people who are maybe younger generation. And also, not only that, but also to talk to our parents as well, to educate them. I think that's, that's really important. Any hope for, for the future? Um, yes and no. It's, it's like, I, you know, like technology is always improving. I'd, I'd kind of like to see that kind of demand path, hopefully. Um, I'd like to have the uh, kind of energy and all that stuff. And I'd, I'd like to have, like, realistically, um, I'd like to have technology being the thing that brings us um, what I like. Yeah, we're going to close the audience and say, I've got this. So, all right, uh, just finally, uh, we'd just like to uh, wrap up. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. We've had a fantastic discussion here. We've heard all the different views. Uh, what would you like to leave us with? What are your final thoughts? I think um, the point that you made is just absolutely spot on about um, the department of ownership here. It's really it's about, it's about sharing our knowledge now, sharing our whatever we know uh, and present the paper. Uh, so the next thing that we have is And I think we need, we need to. Um, we need to have now started the conversation, but we need to keep on building and keep on building and keep on building and I think at the moment, the, the biggest thing that I find for the people in the science community is that they need to try and move in a very, very good class. It's very contained and very kind of movement as well. So people want to count on the group to keep their support for years. And obviously, that must work for some They are the final ground behind everything we do. But we need to widen it out, get more young people involved, um, and, and get to kind of broaden the uh, ability to engage in this issue. Is that kind of the, I mean, have we done enough to actually do anything about sustainable future? I think two things. So, number one, we're on the right path, definitely. But we will hit the bottom. We're, we're close to the things that we quite see the planets to live on. In North America, it's five planets. They're listing, unless we, unless we come with the other two planets, how poor does this get? Uh, that, you know, we're going to the whole the next generation. And we also have to respect it. It's, it's not just about energy, it's about water as well. You know, that's how the most precious resource is not talked about, not, not quite as much as gold, but without water, there's no life. Mm-hmm. And then you have waste as well. You have a number of factors that really require behavioural change. So the choice is in our hands now. And we need to take that forward. Fantastic. So, I mean, you've got people watching from all over the world. What kind of message would you like to keep on in mind? And what reaction do you say to the people around the world about this issue? So there's something to believe that climate change is now made to some extent. That's just not perhaps my role to convince you along the way. That's a decision that each individual will need to make themselves. Um, from my own perspective, I do believe that climate change can change is now made. However, uh, even to put all of that aside, it is incumbent upon all of us to try and make sure that in the future, as a planet, we have enough of our energy resources to live on. Whether or not you believe in climate change, as Tom has quite clearly pointed out, our resources are finite. We don't know when they're going to end, but it must be in our best interest to try and diversify and try and make sure we use all sorts of options in order to fulfil our energy needs. And we can benefit that ourselves. As I said, there's a booming green economy. We desperately need installers. We need people to look at the same sort of technologies on solar that work the way it did at the start, but just aren't quite efficient enough yet. We need better technology. We need more invention. We need innovation. We need people to become involved in the green economy. And whether or not you believe in climate change, that has to be for all of us. Fantastic. And Tom, how would you like to leave the discussion today? Purposefully. Yeah, that's something for you to try. No, the thing is, I, 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 I don't like doing the green, green, green as well, because I get it properly. Um, a, we're an intelligent species. We're very adaptable. We're very clever. This is something we've got to have considered. We've got to start being clever now. But also, there's another hidden thing here. There's a wonderful opportunity here to benefit from this, this, this um, problem by getting together on it, by enjoying each other's company while tackling the problem. I am very, very lucky now. I get to enjoy every day I work 
hard working with good people to tackle a tricky problem. And I, I would exhort all of you watching this program to think about that, to think about the fun that you could have working with other good young, young people to, to tackle problems. It actually makes you feel good. So, you know, think of it in that way. Don't worry about the, the human being and think of it in a, in a, in a positive way. Do you really follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he did not teach this? They are terrorists who claim that they are Muslim. But to cover her head somehow it's offending me. How is it offending me? So as Muslims we have to do our best to take whatever people throw at us but take it in the best way. And although we don't, well, I don't like to admit it, it's not nice but your average Muslim is going to get picked upon. Join me for real stories, real issues and real views. This is Real Talk.